An eighth planet in a distant solar system has just been discovered. NASA announced Thursday that its Kepler Space Telescope made the find. Scientists say the system, called Kepler 90, is more than 2,500 light years away. This is incredible stuff. And joining us now is CBS News space consultant Bill Harwood to explain what this all means. Bill, what do we know about this eighth, flat, eighth planet being discovered in a solar system far away and what it means for us here on Earth? Well, there, there are two aspects of this story that are interesting. One is they found another solar system besides ours that has eight planets in it. So right now, of all the solar systems we've discovered so far, and there's more than 2,500 of those, only two have this many planets, ours and this one. So that's kind of cool in and of itself, right? But I think what's really interesting about this is they discovered this planet using artificial intelligence. They used machine learning, what they call neural networks, to sift through volumes of data from NASA's Kepler satellite. This is data that human astronomers have not yet plowed through. Uh, and this software was able to pick out two planets, uh, the one in the, so in the solar system we just talked about and another planet, which is really, really interesting because that sets the stage for some future research where they might be able to find planets, you know, that, that human astronomers simply wouldn't have the time to get around to given the sheer volume of data we're talking about. So really quite a discovery. And talk to me about how an artificial program can sift through volumes of data and make this kind of find, whereas a human behind a computer wouldn't be able to. And, ha and has it discovered or have, have there been any hints as to if this planet is habitable? Well, I'll answer the second question first. Uh, it's certainly not habitable by any standard we have. Uh, this thing orbits its, its star every 14 days, and the surface temperature is estimated to be around 800 degrees Fahrenheit. So if there's creatures that can live in a world as hot as a pizza oven, well, that's, that's something I won't speculate about. Uh, but the way they did this was uh, the data from the Kepler satellite, um, what it does is it measures the brightness of stars. So when a planet moves in front of the star, as seen by Kepler, the star's light dims ever so slightly. And so by analyzing those light curves, they call them, they can deduce the presence of a planet. Now, what the Kepler astronomers have done to this point is picked out signals that are very, very clear and unambiguous. But of all the stars Kepler has studied, and this is thousands and thousands, there are light curves that are very kind of on the edge, if you will, where it's, it's hard to discern, is that really a planet or not? And the human astronomers, just given the wealth of data, focused on the big signals, as they might call it. What they did with this software is they trained it to recognize the patterns that indicate a planet. The scientists told us it's kind of like teaching a computer how to tell the difference between a dog and a cat. You show them lots and lots of pictures of dogs and cats, and the computers eventually will be able to figure out which is which. Uh, they did the same thing with this data from the Kepler satellite, and they say their, their accuracy record looking at uh, data that humans had already analyzed was something like 96%. So it's a very impressive achievement, and, and, and obviously they're hoping they'll be able to tease out even more planets as time goes on. I mean, all of this is truly mind-blowing to hear you explain how these computers essentially <laughs> discovered a new planet. And I guess what we're looking at here, NASA used um, com a computer learning program uh, by Google. You've got Jeff Bezos' uh, Blue Origin launching a reusable rocket uh, you know there, there there seems to be a the future of space travel seems to be a mix of public and private partnerships is that your view as well in the last few seconds we well have? Um, it is I mean obviously it's always been a mix of public and private it's just how they structure these contracts Jeff Bezos and Blue Origin uh, Elon Musk with SpaceX you know those companies just like United Launch Alliance the big standard the behemoth in the room for rockets they're, they're all private companies that are working for the government in this case. But what's interesting here is the application, I think, of artificial intelligence uh, to a field perhaps that it hadn't occurred to anybody uh, that this might be a useful tool. And I, I think it's really kind of jaw-dropping that they can train computers to go through this data. It really is needle in a haystack kind of thing um, and be able to tease out these details that let them confirm a planet orbiting a star 2,500 light years away and yeah. confirm it. I mean, that's just kind of mind-boggling, as you said. And it's just cool. Bill Harwood, thanks for your time. We'll be back after this.